glad I wasn't the entertainment because my entertainment portion is at home by the name of Randall Wright. If you guys know most of my, my husband, he's my entertainment. <laughs> Good evening. First of all, I would like to thank Shelly Herring. Well, maybe. I don't know. For thinking of me when the committee was discussing a possible guest speaker for tonight's event. When she first contacted me, I immediately said, no, I'm not. I'm not one to get up and speak in front of people, but... Although breast cancer is very near and dear to me, I said I would, and if my story can inspire anyone, just anyone, then my fear was well worth it. My beautiful journey started May 11, 2002. And I know you're probably thinking, uh, she's a little crazy. Did she just say beautiful? Yeah, I did. And at the end of this, you'll understand. A few days prior to May 11, I had experienced the sharpest pain I'd ever felt on the outside part of my breast. Immediately, I rubbed it, and the area was like a lump had grown overnight. Huge, huge lump. My first response that I must have to see the doctor because I must have an abscess or something. After all, I was 29 years old. Cancer was not even in my vocabulary. My primary physician performed a self-exam and quickly stated, nothing to worry. You're too young, and it's probably just a cyst, but to make sure we need to do a mammogram. So then I was off to radiology where I had my first mammography experience. <laughs> now do I really have to tell you guys how I felt about that? I don't think so. Little did I know that this was going to be first of many mammograms. Needless to say, what I thought was an abscess turned out to be cancer. It seemed at the time that everything in the world as I knew it stopped and I jumped onto the cancer roller coaster. Decisions were needed quickly in my treatment due to the fact that the type of cancer I had was one of the fastest growing kinds. Not even in my family. No family history whatsoever. Therefore, along with my family, we made the best decision we knew and that was for a lumpectomy, chemotherapy, radiation. Again, remember, 29 years old. I'm not ready to lose my girls. The surgery, hey, no big deal. Now for the chemotherapy. And I think one of the scariest days of a person's life living with cancer is your very first day of receiving chemotherapy. Especially when you learn one of their nicknames is the Red Devil. Are you kidding me? As a woman, I really think we only have one thing on our mind when we hear the words chemotherapy, and that is, OMG, I'm going to lose my hair. Well, it's really not that bad once the initial shock is over. I actually kind of liked it because being bald in the summertime is so much cooler. And ladies, you don't have to shave anywhere else. <laughs> I will never forget the night I chose to shave my head for the first time. My husband, Randall, whom I'd only been married to for seven months, knew of my hesitancy, and he had several black guy friends, big burly guy friends, show up after I shaved my head with razors in hand, telling me, hey, shave my head too. Randall and the guys all lined up in a row, and we continued to shave into the night with a shaving party. My two boys, Preston and Aaron, who were just three and five, thought that they had to be a part of this as well. So much love was felt that night. Chemotherapy treatments continued, followed by radiation treatments. I continued on with follow-up doctor's appointments until that five-year mark was reached with much celebration. As I continued on with life, it seemed that I became the go-to person as each of my newly diagnosed friends came to me with questions and concerns about their diagnosis. And I felt really blessed to be able to help them. But you know what really sucks? Watching them, one by one, lose their battles. I don't know how many times I prayed and asked God, why them? Why not me? What is so special about me? In June of 2009, it was apparent that I needed medical assistance, and this time, I was elated to say it wasn't due to cancer, or so I thought. I had developed an abdominal hernia, and surgery was a must, to say the least. Two weeks after the hernia surgery was performed, I discovered another lump <coughs> in the same breast as before. I remember the biopsy day very clearly as if it was yesterday. I was so sick. I had over 103 temperature, chilling, severe abdominal pain, but I'll be damned if I was going to tell anyone because I felt like if I did, at this point, the biopsy would not be performed. So I tapped it out and continued on. 
The next morning, I'm lying in bed, and I felt a twinge in my stomach. And as we looked down at the abdominal dressing, it was discovered that my incision was wide open and draining. And at the same time, and I'm not even kidding, at the same time, our telephone rings. It's the oncologist. She had the results of the biopsy, but I didn't need or talk to her because I already knew what she was going to tell me. It was back, and this time it wasn't going to be just the cancer we were about to deal with. My family was soon to be very versed in MRSA, infections, isolation precautions, and wound care. Due to the MRSA, we had to put the cancer treatments on the back burner and deal with the immediate threat, which is the immediate threat continued for several months, and by the time we were able to deal with the treatments, I was terrified it already spread everywhere, but lucky for me, it did not. Treatments began with chemotherapy and radiation, and this time, I pretty well knew what to expect, so my fear of beginning them was more like anticipation, which is get it over with. My hair loss was not a big deal this time. However, to my sister, Janae, it became her mission to show other women that you can be bald, and beautiful at the same time and to prove this she shaved her head and kept it that way throughout the whole entire treatments every time she seen someone that she felt like they looked at her thinking oh she's sick she handed them a card and told them exactly why she had done what she did i continued to have hernia complications throughout and the day i presented for my last chemotherapy treatment i instantly found myself back in the hospital to have yet another surgery <coughs> and by this time we were packing several yards of wound packing instead of inches into my open abdominal incision the constant back and forth with each issue we were dealing with was beyond exhausting i remember the night before surgery we stayed in a hotel in columbia and randall as randall and i tried to sleep we both secretly wept he wrapped his arms around me and he never let go. That's a night we'll never forget. The day finally came for my double mastectomies. I felt numb for the most part and really felt that I was losing my womanhood and losing a part of me, a part of me that had fed my sweet babies. I had expanders put in immediately and the plan was to let those incisions heal then I would periodically have saline inserted into them until I got to the size that I wanted to be and then they would be removed and permanent implants would be used. I wish now that I had had someone like me to share their experience, and I really think that I would have taken a second look at redoing reconstruction. Why must we all think we have to have a perfect body? What really is the perfect body? I was going through some of my Caring Bridge blogs the other day, and I'm going to share one with you that is the day that I decided boobs were way overrated this blog was written March 29, 2010. Well, things have been going pretty good here since we came home from the hospital. No fevers and a lot less pain. Woohoo! I was hooked up to a wound vac during surgery to help, the, help heal the infected cavity on the left side of my chest wall. Basically, what this consists of is a sponge that is on the inside of the cavity that soaks up the drainage. And then there's a hose hooked up to the outside of my skin and is attached to a machine that constantly sucks the drainage out of the sponge. Now this was put inside of me during surgery and no one had touched it since I had had it put in. I would never had one of these or seen one of these so I had no idea what to expect from the first dressing change today. I felt really good this morning and I didn't have any pain so I didn't feel like I needed a pain pill. Susan, my home health nurse, was great explaining everything and what she was going to do and why she had to do it, even though neither one of us knew exactly what we were about to endure. She started taking off the tegaderm, which is a clear bandage that protects and holds everything inside and goes over my skin and wound. Wow, that sure did hurt coming off, but the pain was nothing about was nothing compared to about what I was going to endure. It took her at least 15 minutes and scratch that. Susan Mosier is my home health nurse. We were talking a while ago. We were thinking it was probably a half hour to work that sponge out of the wound. She had to moisten it with saline and pull just a little at a time because if she was to jerk it out, it would bleed and she didn't want to do that. So little by little, it started to come out and that in itself was really painful. We were both in shock to see the size of the sponge. It was the size of a saucer plate. The wound itself was 13 centimeters long, 7 centimeters wide, and 2 centimeters deep. 
As I laid here holding back the tears, I'm thinking to myself, oh girl, <laughs> the next time you're taking pain pills. <laughs> Susan told me to lay here for just a little bit before she placed the new sponge to catch my breath and just try to relax. But I thought she needed a break too. This was very difficult for her as well. <coughs> she explained to me the last thing she wanted to do was hurt me, but she had to get the sponge inside where it covers the whole cavity or it would leave room for yet another buildup, which we do not want, and she would have to use her whole hand because of the size of the wound. Well, let me tell you, I held it together while Susan was working on me, and then after she left, I cried and cried and cried with pain. That was the most painful, miserable thing I ever had to go through. At this point, my thoughts were, this is not worth it, just to have boobs. I will continue to pray about it, but I'm really leaning towards having the right side expander taken out and just get healed and to say, heck with it all. I feel that if I follow the original plan to wait three months after the wound back comes off and try to have it done again, I'm asking for myself, asking for this all over again. And I do not want to put myself or my family and friends through that. Please pray for the best decision for me. Well, this lasted over a two-year time span. Two years. We lost count after 25 surgeries. Numerous admissions to the hospital, even including Christmas Day. Countless doctor's appointments, as well as countless days of home health visits. My doctors were amazed at how close to death I came several times. I was one of those patients that if it would or could go wrong, it happened. I was told several times that I was their favorite problem patient. I can't even tell you, begin to tell you how I feel about all my doctors and nurses and caregivers. One in particular, Susan. I knew of Susan prior to all this, just as a coworker. But little did I know how you were and still are as a nurse. You are the most amazing nurse I have ever met. And I feel if it was not for your keen knowledge, I would not be standing here today. You saved my life on more than one occasion, and for that I thank you. And you will always forever be my Susan to me. To my family, I know that none are here tonight with the exception of my best friend Chris. But you were all amazing. Randall, as I said, is my husband, stayed the countless times that being in the hospital, even when I was in isolation. I can't even begin to tell you how many times he, with the rest of my family, donned on the lovely yellow gown, gloves, and masks. I don't know this from personal experience, but I know they cannot be comfortable to sleep in. But it was done so that I was never alone. He worked nights that so, he, so he could stay at home with me during the day and then my boys would be with me at night. He learned how to change my chest wall and abdominal dressings and did so with so much care. He would make me laugh when I wanted to cry and he kept me positive on the days I wanted to be negative. My family kept us going financially once our benefit money's depleted. I could seriously go on forever, I think, standing here telling you everything that everybody has done for me. However, I have to close at some point. But with each passing day, I prayed so hard every day that God would heal me, even if it meant that I would just live long enough to see Preston, my oldest son, graduate from high school. Those prayers continued with every life event that I had coming up and continue to this day. Let me tell you, where I'm at today because of these prayers. <clears throat> Not only did I get to see Preston graduate from high school, I saw him graduate from the United States Marine Corps. I seen him get married, and I witnessed the birth of his first child while he was deployed in Afghanistan. I've seen Dalton, my oldest stepson, graduate high school and begin college while legally blind, and Brianna, my stepdaughter graduated from college and gave birth to her first child. Most recently experienced Aaron, my youngest boy, graduate from high school. And he too followed in his brother's footsteps and graduated from the United States Marine Corps just last month. I'm looking forward to the upcoming high school graduation for Tucker, my youngest stepson, and his enlistment 
and the Marine Corps as well. Thank gosh we don't have to worry about the fights at Christmas. <laughs> this past July, I celebrated my five-year cancer anniversary. Cancer is scary, and it takes things away from you, but I embraced it, and it has changed me in so many ways, in ways I never thought were possible. Still, through all of this, I prayed, seeking my purpose. Don't get me wrong. Although I'm extremely blessed and thankful to be here today, how can I be? I knew God had a plan, and I just didn't know what it was until recently. I had the opportunity to partake in a breast cancer awareness photo shoot. I now know that I needed to be the voice and let others know your self-image is what you make of it, and you can be beautiful without breasts. Therefore, to be an inspiration for others, it is my mission. Blackwell Photography captured my beauty and my perfect story, and the rest of the photos will be out on their Facebook page soon. Yes, I did say Facebook. <laughs> I will also have this on my personal page, and please feel free to share this with your family and friends. I've even went as far as that last night to submit my picture, topless, with a boa, I have to have some attitude, to Ellen DeGeneres to help me be my voice. I'm blessed for what cancer has given me, and not what it took for me. And as my Marine sons would say, I, we, have adapted, we've achieved, and we've overcame, and only true warriors can do that. Hoorah. <laughs>